Hello everyone, so today we're talking about something fun for WAN 2.1 image to video. You can see here, we've got some demos of the character and the angles are becoming more dynamic. You can see it's going in different directions within that five second short video clip. When we're able to see that, it's fully controllable for different angles, for the video and for the character motion as well. Now this is Unit 3C, is claimed to be the camera and human motion control for video generation. So what it does is basically, you can use other videos or 3D objects as input and control the motions using that as a guide for your newly generated videos. Let's say we have an image we want to animate as an AI video, and you don't want it to be boring with just one single camera motion, which is usually generated by AI videos purely from image to video or text to video. Whereas you can have a little more enhancement using camera control and guidance from another video with similar camera angles and human movement as well. So as you can see, the camera controls result in something like this, where you can do very dynamic movements within a short duration clip, within 5 or 10 seconds, and it won't just be simple camera panning left and right or tilting up and down, which we usually see in AI videos. Right now, we have a more dynamic way to do camera control using another video as a guide, just like what I showed in my examples here. Within that five seconds, you'll see that the camera movement and the character within that background are very dynamically presentable within these five or 10 second short clips. So we're going to check out how we can use that. This is able to run with the WAN 2.1 AI video model. Jumping into Comfy UI, we're using the WAN video wrapper this time. This is based on the image to video model. So, as you can see, I'm using the WAN 2.1 Image to Video 14B720P model for the model loader so it will be able to use an image as input. We're using the video as a guide here. With more dynamic motions and character movement, we'll try to use this as a control net way of guiding our output video. Talking about control net, this Unit 3C, as we've used in Multitalk before, in Multitalk, we use this WAN video, Unit 3C Embed, and connected it with Multitalk for the AI talking avatar to allow the camera to have steady, still camera angles for that 1 minute or 30 second AI avatar talking duration. This time, I'm just using the Unit 3C control net and connecting it to the loader, all the way to the embed. Lastly, we do it in the video sampler, using Unit 3C, we're able to create more dynamic control. Even if I just prompt, the girl is dancing or walking, just very simple text prompts here. But if I'm not connecting this Unit 3C, it will be very boring with a stay still camera motion for the AI video. So first, let's go check out how to install this control net model. The Unit 3C control net, we're going to save it in our comfy UI folder. So in our file folder, you're going to the models folder and save that in the control net subfolder. Once in the control net subfolder, as you can see, I have separate different types of AI models. ControlNet uses the WAN folder to store this Unit 3C ControlNet files. And this file is downloaded from the WAN Video Wrapper Hugging Face repo. When you go to the WAN Video Wrapper Comfy UI repo, there's a lot of stuff stored in this repo by the author. The WAN video includes different AI models and different add on features of the model as well, using in the WAN Videos wrapper. Now scroll down to the middle of the page. You'll see this WAN 2.1 Unit 3C Control Net. So you're going to download this and just like what I just showed, save it in the Control Net folder. So this is how you'll get this Control Net loader loading this model selected in the right way and also the Base Precision FP16. This is how you load it. Now, we're going to check out the WAN Videos encoder below here. This is a little bit tricky. Now I've used not an image, Instead, I've linked it up with the video reference. That means I'm going to jump to here. You see these connections? It's going back to the beginning of the video connections of my video loader. So I have, for example, this stock footage of the guy dancing on the rooftop. You see the camera is panning left and right, and then the guy steps forward at the end here. And this is going to be the motion guide in this control net for running our generated video. Although, as you can see, my futuristic style of the urban city and the woman walking, the dimensions are different. It's not using my stock footage dimensions, but it's still able to mimic the camera motions and the character motions. In this video, it won't be exactly like the DW pose or the line art control net, 
those kinds of control nets for character movement. This is more for camera control, as it's already mentioned in the research paper here, the human and character controls result with your video generation. So it's very similar to what we've shown before. The Recam Master is also available in the WAN Video Record Wrapper repo. When you scroll down to the end of the page, you'll see the Recam Master LoRa model. Now, the Recam Master, I can see it's a more simple way to use this model for your camera control. You won't be able to have more dynamic control like this where, you know, within those five seconds of this video, you can see that it's so dynamic, creating more enhanced camera movement from left to right. In the Recam Master, you're only able to do it in one direction only. This is the difference between two camera control models. Let's say if I'm doing another experiment, I'm not going to connect this Unit 3C embed. So after this disconnect, that means I'm not loading this control net loader, then going back here, and let's say this girl is walking on the street, just like the text prompts that I did in previous examples for this video clip. It's a very simple text prompt this time as well. Let's generate one time and you'll see the difference. So, again, I have to mention one more time. This is the image to video model. It's not the WAN Videos Base or WAN 2.1 Text to Video. It's for image to video only. I've tested this for videos to videos, but it's not able to work at all using VASE to do the generation. Also, one thing that's good for this model connected in the WAN Videos wrapper is that we can use the context options. Something that's missed out here in these connections is where we divide each 81 frames in chunks and we're able to generate a long video length. So I'm going to test this one in the next demonstration. But first, let's wait for this sampler to run and we'll see how that result looks like. So as you can see, at the bottom of the command prompt window here, we're not using too much, just 11 gigs allocated and the maximum reserve is 13 gigabytes of VRAM. And I was using 48 seconds to generate this 81 frame video. And right here, as you can see, without the Unit 3C embed connected, the motions are very boring. Image to video video that I got from my image here. I should put a preview here so you guys can have an easier time seeing the next one to see the preview of the image. But because I'm using the load image from Path and without any preview here the first time I ran this, so you get the idea, this is the image and pass it to this to generate the image to video without the video as a guidance for the camera control net for the motions, etc. It's very boring. So let's say when I connect this Unit 3C embed connection and then come back here, we see that the first video for the camera motion guiding, the maximum is 217 frames. So let's say in this frame length, I can change this as well to 217 or something similar. Everything is connected the same here. Next, we're going to use another dimension rather than this portrait dimension to play around with the next generated video. And because I've just edited the frame length, I'm using the context options here this time to help us to have a longer video length extension in the one video wrapper. It's so convenient, just using one note here for the context options. And although we have like 217 frames, we're able to render all of it in one single batch of generation. So I'm going to use my folder here and try it out with another new image. Let's say this time I'm going to import another new image that I just generated within the past 10 seconds. And I have to resize that with the dimensions. This time it's not in portrait and I'm doing that with the 720p resolution. I want to test how that's going to look like in the 720p resolution. And also having this dynamic camera, how that looks. Let's test that out here. And we have our video generated here. So let's check it out. How does that look? It's going to the camera moving on the left and then going back to the right. There's a hand coming up as well. Something surprising here that's getting from this camera motion. Let's put that side by side and see how that looks like. So something like this is using the camera motions rather than more for the character pose. That's the main point of how this camera, this Unit 3C control net, is being used. And there's more ways to use this control net, which is like in previous videos we talked about multi-talk where you can use this for lip sync. And right now, there's something cool with multi-talk, like person talking. So you can, you know, create a conversational talk that we'll be trying out in the upcoming video. And this is something that we can use for running locally in Comfy UI with multiple person talking.
So far this looks pretty cool. You can enhance videos like this even more, with dynamic camera motions. That's not only one way of trajectory. Now, we're getting more styles, and the camera motion is getting more different angles. If you have a good reference of videos, it can basically just follow your reference videos in this way. So, I haven't seen people talk about this alone in using this for the workflow currently, and I haven't seen that the example workflows have shown only using the Unit 3C. So, I think it's good to cover this one as well to let people know that um, using this camera, this control net, you're able to have more dynamic camera control for your AI video. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a nice day. See ya.